Okay, I will start right away to leave enough time for a considerable selection of scenes from episode 11 of season one of the American version of House of Cards. In the American version of House of Cards, Francis Underwood, known as Frank, is a powerful uh, representative of the Democratic Party, who at the beginning of the story is denied an appointment to the position, the prestigious position of Secretary of State by the new president, President Walker, whose campaign he has uh, committed, uh, to whose campaign he has committed a, lo a lot of time and energy. Frank is married to Claire. They're a power couple. She has a foundation. She works on providing water to developing countries. And she does that as a power gain. Because he was denied the appointment to the position of Secretary of State, upon which he uh, relied to launch his career, and his wife Claire relied on that because donors, important donors, rich donors, would be giving her money, more money for her charitable foundation if her husband were to be Secretary of State. Frank engages in a series of strategies, maneuvers, in order to regain the power and in fact gain more power. Um, so during the first part of the season, we see, for example, how Frank blackmails a uh, member, a congressman, Peter Russo, who uh, was caught with drugs in his car and in the company of an escort. Frank manages to get him out of the police station where he was taken without a record of that arrest. And of course, then Peter Russo becomes kind of a political toy boy for Frank. Frank manages to convince Peter Russo to run for the position of governor in Pennsylvania, which is his home state as a congressman, knowing that Peter Russo will fail because Peter Russo has a problem with drugs and alcohol. The failure is instrumental in Frank Underwood's plan because after the candidacy, the campaign for the governorship of Peter Russo fails, Frank, as we will see during this episode, will manipulate the vice president and the president into, and, and will try to convince the vice president to abandon his post and run for governor. When he succeeds, Frank is supposed to become vice president himself. And of course, that will also happen. And later after uh, this season, Frank will manage to uh, force the president to resign and he will become president himself. How is Frank Underwood Machiavellian? To what extent? And how is he as a character fundamentally different from a Machiavellian leader. I would re-examine the following elements. In a Machiavellian system, in the examples and the chapters from Machiavelli's The Prince, we find that good leadership is predicated upon the possession of skills that are in demand in a social and political context. So there is a certain amount of necessity into leadership. In the Machiavellian system, there is this idea that there are few individuals who can become leaders, and leadership is very much their destiny, right? Because nature has endowed them with some skills. 
if they're good leaders, they've developed their skills and make them um, more powerful. At the same time, nature and fortune, the circumstances place that individual in a context where those skills were in demand. So it would be a personal and a social failure if they didn't pursue their leadership. So the leadership is a social matter and the leadership is necessary, their leadership is necessary to resolve an issue that exists in their society. In order to accomplish the goal of resolving that issue, the Machiavellian leader will do what is necessary, which means that in order to do that, you have to plan ahead. You have to analyze the situation. You have to understand exactly what is necessary. In a Machiavellian system, as I've repeated many, many times, you need both influence and force, but clearly, especially given the historical background, the emphasis is on force, right? And influence comes second. Has to be there, but it comes second. Because of force, the leader in Machiavellian, in the Machiavellian system is feared more than loved, but needs to be respected because otherwise fear could transform into hatred. So he needs to have a reputation. He needs to support values even when those values are not part of the leader's life. What about Frank Underwood? And similarly, in some ways, the character of Francis Burkhardt in uh, the British version of House of Cards. At the root of it all, you find a powerful drive to succeed. And leadership is predicated on ambition, right? Frank is an ambitious character. It's not like he has skills that only few individuals possess and therefore it is his destiny to address some powerful critical issues in his society. No, he's one of many. What he has that, he makes, that makes him different is that he has a more powerful drive. He's more ambitious. It's an individual path, right? Not a social path. And he has a goal, which is very much to have more power for himself, not some kind of political crisis to resolve, right? So Frank Underwood is somewhat Machiavellian because he'll do whatever is necessary, which is different from what is necessary, right? Depending on the circumstances, Frank will improvise. And as we will see in this episode, for example, he will kill Peter Russo. And I've picked this episode because it's the equivalent of the episode we watched from the British version of House of Cards. Peter Russo is the character that is closest to Roger O'Neill in the episode we watched. Both are killed by the protagonist. Both are manipulated, exploited by the protagonist. Okay, so there is a certain amount of improvisation which we saw also in the character of Tom Ripley. It's a subtle but essential difference. Do whatever is necessary. Is Machiavellian to a degree because Machiavelli had something else in mind. That is to say, to really identify when necessity supports the choice of the use of force or even deceit, etc. Manipulation. In a modern system, and we see that in today's episode as well. Influence is primary, the use of force is secondary. Even Frank will kill a few people, but uh, his use of force is limited, mostly rely on influence. Now, influence in this kind of political game is connected to two elements. You have to be likable, and again, as I said about Frank Burkert, I don't think this guy is likable enough to be influential, right? You see these scenes, you see him with the vice president and the president, you wonder, why are they trusting Frank Underwood? I'd never trust Frank Underwood. My grandma would not trust Frank Underwood, <laughs> right? It is as simple as that. Anyway. People voted for Nixon. Yes, they, they did, they did, no, no doubt. It's a good point. 
It's a very good point. Although I, I might respond, he was the last of his kind, right? Somebody so openly dark. Yes. <laughs> right. So you have to be like likable. Now, this is especially true of American society. Uh, a successful le political leader has to be respectful. That is to say, not just support values uh, in, in public events, but practice values. So it's a more difficult game because even having an affair can be the end of your political career, which is not true, for example, of uh, European societies such as France, Italy, at least wasn't true uh, in, in the 20th century the, and the beginning of the 21st century. Now things are changing there as well. Okay, that was my quick introduction and now we're going to see uh, a more, more than half of episode 11, which starts with Frank in the office of the vice president trying to set up a system whereby the vice president will accept Frank's idea to run for governor in Pennsylvania, replacing the failing candidate of their party, Peter Russo. Then he'll go to the president and do the same. And we'll see uh, his wife, Frank's wife, how she deals with a romantic relationship with a photographer by the name of Adam, ultimately, choosing political success as part of a power couple that is on their way to the White House over love. In this series as well, we'll find a journalist, a young journalist, her name is Zoe, that is being manipulated by Frank and then uh, abandoned, discarded. Zoe doesn't, doesn't die in this particular episode because as I said, uh, American series have to uh, expand the story into as many episodes as possible. However, Zoe will die. Frank will eventually kill Zoe as well, pushing her under a train. So let's proceed.